I want to help, so let's go over it. First, I want to talk about, just note the places I, we talked with my not giving you sort of references to the book, and since part of the job is to understand how to read Heidegger, I want to show you where these things we talked about uh, actually are mentioned. So on, one, on 120, for instance, science is making uh, this, this question of laws, which are universal. Uh, and that's, we're just again, he's still talking on 120 about middle of the page when he did the paragraph. Science becomes research through the projected plan and through the securing of that plan in the rigor of procedure. And then he talks about that you want to have these rules uh, that, that instead of a rule, really, that, that change, the constancy of change and the necessity of its course is a law. And then within that, you can uh, make uh, strict claims and you can find ex- exceptions and then you can't allow any exceptions. It's not like saying something happens as a rule, in which you can say, well, yes, but sometimes it doesn't happen, and that's okay. But if you say there's a law, then you mean this necessarily always happens under these conditions, and if it doesn't, you've got an anomaly. You have to, you have to get rid of it, deal with it, or give up. Uh, and that means, and what's special, and again, uh, Heidegger's ahead of, the guy right before Kuhn was the person named uh, Karl Popper, whom you may or may not have heard of, who wrote this important book, and exactly the same, it was published exactly the same year as this, uh, talking about how important it is that in modern science you have falsification, that you can actually, you set it up so rigorously that then if something comes along that doesn't happen the way it's supposed to happen, you've got falsification. Whereas if you have belief in monsters and miracles and rules, and, and as a rule, you could never have it. And that's the essential feature of, uh, according to Popper, is, uh, of science, of, what's, what's the name of his book in German? The Logic of Research, I just realized. Got the same name. I, what, I, I remember I used to wonder who read who, but they came out the same year. I guess they just did each on their own. But the important thing is that in this kind of science, falsification is absolutely basic and you, you set it up so that you find out whether your laws are, apply or not and science proceeds by learning by falsification that's really what you find out is this law these whatever laws you've got don't work and you have to make new laws um, and he talks about this at the top of 122 that uh, on the basis of the law laid down in order to adduce the facts to either verify or confirm the law or deny its confirmation. The more exact the ground plan of nature is projected, the more exact becomes the possibility of experiment. And he's not being as extreme as Popper. And science progresses by falsification. It's so important that the science was... Now, now I'm saying something not in Heidegger, but uh, that I care a lot about. It's so important, if you think you've got anything like a science, that you set out clear expectations about what would count as confirming, and then you recognize your failures and your disconfirmations. I care a lot about work in artificial intelligence, and which which is a branch of computer science and, to, and claims to be a science. But you, if you study artificial intelligence, you discover that nobody ever explains what went wrong. Things there, everything they do goes wrong. They try to make a robot, the latest one at the MIT called COG, that they said was going to be able to acquire language and so forth, and of course that was impossible and it didn't. But you never read even that, that they gave up on COG, and COG is now in the museum unless you pursue. And if you say, and exactly what did you expect it to be able to do that it turned out not to be able to do, I don't know whether they don't know or they won't say, but they never talk about the, their expectation. They talk a lot about their expectation. They never talk about their uh, falsification and ask themselves why. But clearly it's true. Science progresses by learning what went wrong. And, uh, and that's, and at least research does. Modern science does. I mean, they sound like alchemists in the AI business. They didn't probably talk about what went wrong either. Uh, let's see. Um, so, I've got that. And so we get the scientific method, which is this objectifying of everything into a, a, a 
plan where you can observe whether it succeeds or whether it fails, and that is the top of 125. <clears throat> so, a second sentence in that paragraph. Nothing less than the making secure of the precedence of methodology, that's what we've been talking about, making, making up strict rules and then trying to falsify them. Uh, the precedence of methodology over whatever is nature or history, which at any given time becomes objective in research. On the foundation of their character is ongoing activity. The sciences are creating for themselves the solidity and unity appropriate to that. See, Heidegger likes science. And solidarity. Thinks that's fine. What? Solidarity. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, solidarity. Thanks. This is this, this dyslexia. Uh, and unity appropriate to them. And Heidegger doesn't think that's wrong. He thinks that's fine. That's, that's modern science is a great enterprise. He's interested in and, and the idea of this ongoing activity, getting rid of anomalies, is interesting to him. And another one that's interesting to us, he isn't so interested in it, he passes over it very quickly, is that this kind of modern science has a certain kind of flexibility. He passes it over quickly, I think, because he really has his toe into postmodern there, but he doesn't know it. But the whole modern thing has been set up clear rules, clear standards, clear methods, clear ground plan and then work out your science on it. But he talks here about how you can sort of constantly redefine your science in a, and make it very flexible. And then he just drops it. He only talks about it in one paragraph, on 126, about eight lines down. The excellence demanded of the system is not some contrived and rigid unity of the relationships among object spheres having to do with content, but it's the greatest but is rather the greatest possible free, though regulated, flexibility in the shifting about an introduction of research apropos of the leading path at any given time. That does not sound like something uh, uh, Newton or Descartes would have said. I mean, it looked like physics was clear what it was doing, and chemistry was clear about what it was doing, and biology was clear about what it was doing. But Heidegger sees that that's not how it's developed. It develops into something, and here we see it in biology. I mean, they redefine all the departments. They they build a new building which doesn't have all the the, the same specialties because they all ended up overlapping each other and constantly making new specialties. And that that kind of flexibility is something that's built into uh, science and research. But it's something that don't only comes out, I think, later than this modern thing that he's talking about. Ken, yeah. I was also wondering if you could say something about the, um, on 123, he says, specialization, he talks about specialization in, in the sciences, and he says it's not the consequence, but the foundation of the progress of all research. The last paragraph of 123. Okay, let's see. I haven't thought about it. I have to think, I'll have to read it. Let's all read it. The bottom of 123. I think that's really modern, and that's okay. The modern time to turn that thing. Okay. It's just an observation. I, maybe there's something deep that I'm missing, but I mean, it's true that you keep getting more, you get, you know, go from bo bio botany to, uh, uh, what, genetics to, uh, molecular biology. Every time they discover a whole new realm that they can make science out of, and that's, I don't know, I can't say, I don't know why it's significant, it's just true, that's how science works. I was just wondering, in regard to our, our discussion last time about... Um, specialization, yeah. Specialization, yeah, standardization. Ah, yeah, the science. specialization, we decided specialization was okay, I don't know if it's going to help here, because that you made judgments in there, where a standardization turns you into an automaton and people lose their skills and revolt, yeah. and science has specialization, it doesn't try to turn people into uh, standard something or others. Right. That's right. back to this yeah, and then, but then that's a further development. I would say, just in, in our terms, that, that specialization is part of, the, of modern science and research. But flexibility is something that, that Heidegger 
notes because it's there on, on when he talks about it on 126. You can constantly redefine your departments, shift them about. That talking about shifting about, that very word, is going to turn out to be a big deal in postmodern uh, technology, which is not the same as research. And I think he just got a, he sort of glimpses something there and then he draws back. There's something else important he glimpses and draws back from, which we get to in a minute. Uh, so, and so now I'm just, there's a new understanding that makes all this possible and, that, and constitutes the essence of modern science. But when it, and that's, and transforms it into research. Uh, that's on, I don't think I have to read anything more to catch up with where we were last time. No, but the crucial transition is on 127. Science sets up this object domain, and it, he says at the end of the top paragraph, only that which becomes object in this way, that is fitting into this projection, is, that is, is considered to be in being. We first arrive at science as research when the being of what is is sought in such objectiveness. That's just a fancy way of saying, again, that the pro science projects an understanding of what, it count, what counts as nature, in this case, accounts as real in some domain, and that is then objectifies it and determines what everything can show up as. And that's uh, the objectifying, I want to go on, of whatever is, is accomplished in the setting before. He's making a transition, we'll see in a minute, to uh, what he calls representation. A setting before, a representing, that aims at bringing each particular being before it as such in such a way that man who calculates can be sure, and that means be certain of that being. We first arrive at science as research when and only when truth has been transformed into the certainty of representing. Well, there's lots of talk about representing in Descartes and so forth. What Heidegger thinks is important about representing is, and now we get to the whole world picture business, we haven't got to that till 128, is that the subject, namely us, sets up a total picture model would do I think the picture has the sense of you've got every detail in place and everything is in the picture that, that, is, that counts as being part of that picture you set up this total picture and then on the basis of that you can do science and representing is a word for making this picture imposing this uh, projection or this model does the paradigm work there? paradigm the picture? Does the paradigm the picture? No, for interesting reasons, very interesting reasons. The picture that Heidegger's uh, uh, picturing is uh, sort of, if everything is in it, in its place, in detail, every detail is there, and it covers everything. It's <clears throat> Think of that as just a, a, a photograph in which there's everything is in it, that's in it, and it's clear what's in it, and it's got everything in it that you wanted when you took that scene. That's how science is. Why isn't it a paradigm? Well, a paradigm, Kuhn says, and Heidegger has got an idea of paradigms too, but not in science, but in uh, culture. Uh, uh, but it's very Kuhnian. A paradigm is a particular something or other that holds up to the people involved a, a very perspicuous example of what they're up to. But it's an, in, an individual instance, like Newton's Principia. That's exemplar, a paradigm. Is that, is that what? What? Exemplar? Exemplar, that's another word for it. It's an exemplar. A paradigm is a word from a linguistics where you set up a way of, a verb gets conjugated. Isn't it something like that? Uh, so, but exemplar is probably better, but for this, for making it clear. So, but an exemplar, one, it isn't a total picture. It's, it's an exemplar, it's an example. And moreover, Kuhn is very interesting about this. He says, it's something you can never rationalize. What that means is, you can't explain about the paradigm fully what it is to do science like that. The scientists all imitate the paradigm. It's all, this is rela re related to uh, uh, Taylor again. Because Taylor thinks you can make all the rules explicit and clear. All you need is a stopwatch and, and some money for management. But uh, what, what Kuhn says, and Heidegger says, is 
that the paradigm is an example, a perfect example, which everybody agrees is the best job anybody ever did at, at this, and they want to imitate it, but they can't spell out exactly what it is to imitate it. They can't say, I'm going to do what's similar to it, and by similar I mean this and this and this. Kuhn says at one point, they, they do what, their activity has to be similar to the activity of the, of Newton, say, who, who made the paradigm, but they can't say similar with respect to what. You can't give a list of features to get rid of the similarity. So there's all this interesting stuff that there's something, a kind of judgment involved that you can't make, you can't get rid of in doing science. You have to judge whether what you're doing is similar to what the paradigm, the exemplary person did and wrote down. And that, that sort of, for Heidegger that would get in the way of his story because he wants to talk about some other aspect of science, which is sort of in principle has already taken account of everything in that domain. That's why there can be anomalies. If you didn't say my laws, this is a crucial idea that he's got. If you didn't believe that your laws covered everything, that your picture was the whole picture, then you wouldn't have anomalies. You you would say, well, that didn't fit in, so what? But the whole idea is everything has got to fit in, every detail. And that's like getting the total picture. And that's the aspect of science that he wants to, that's the modern thing he wants to stress here. When he talks about paradigms, he talks about the way works of art, like the medieval cathedral, is a paradigm for the people in the culture, because it shows them what they uh, live for. And it doesn't show them a list of values, it, and you couldn't turn it into a list of values. So Heidegger has a paradigm, all right, but he just doesn't see it in science. But, but that's very helpful. Let's see now. So we want to get... So that when you have an understanding that makes all this science possible, there is a mo- moment of flexibility there, but it doesn't turn, Heidegger doesn't make anything of it. What he's interested in on 27 is objectifying and representing. And that means what he calls man getting the picture. And I have to tell you the translation is wrong. In, it, it's a kind of, everybody's got this wrong. In the German, it says, this thing that gets translated, getting the picture. Where is that tragedy? Man gets the picture. To get the picture, the bottom of 129. To get the picture, about 15 lines, throbs with being acquainted with something, with being equipped and prepared for it, where the world becomes picture of what is in its entirety. See, that's the, his, his picture of picture is everything is in the picture, or it doesn't count. Hence, I'm going to the bottom, world picture, what understood essentially does not mean a picture of the world, but the world conceived and grasped as picture. That then, that again means grasp as a whole, down to the smallest detail, everything in its place. What is in its entirety is now taken in such a way that it, that it first is in being and only is in being to the extent that it's set up by man who represents and so forth. Now, he keeps wanting to emphasize that we project the picture. I mean, it's us that decide how we're going to define the domain of nature. When we decide, we then say everything has to fit in. But it's we, and now he has this sort of pun on, he likes to use the sort of take apart words. We represent, which is sort of represent to ourselves the picture. Or, and now you get him, and he makes a whole big thing of this notion. And he, he says the word object is the same thing. In German, the word Gegenstand, object, means throwing something before yourself. And in German, it does too, apparently. Jet and the object is the throw part. But, so, he wants to stress the fact that we make up the, the ground plan, and we impose it on nature. And we say, it only counts as real if it meets our standards of what we're going to say counts as nature. Man has, we, have this crucial role of giving the meaning to everything and fitting and, and, and making up a context or a something in which all of these things have to fit into place. What was particularly wrong with the translation? Oh, I, where was it? To get the picture. I, I lost... 
129. We get the picture, the middle of 129. Literally, we are in the picture concerning something. This means the, see, it, 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 this, this translation is okay. I didn't realize that. It's a, it's the earlier translation that's not okay. They must have fixed it. Okay, the, that's the right thing. We get the picture is exactly the right thing to say, but literally in German it says, we're in the picture. That's completely the wrong thing to say. We're objectifying it. We're standing outside the picture. We're making sort of the rules for what house is in the picture. Uh, the word, any, anybody, if anybody knows German, it sounds like we're in the picture. It's the German is sich im Bild setzen. That means literally to put oneself in the picture. But when Heidegger's using it, it, it means, uh, and it means that also, if you say, if you say, ah, there was this accident and all these people were running around and everybody was hurt, you can say in effect that, that uh, you get the picture. You weren't there. You're not involved. And that same German word, the same expression, the Zichim Bildsetzen means to get the picture. Okay, so he's yeah. thinking of it definitely that way. First and let's, oh, wow. Okay, let me see where I am and I, because I think this is a good stopping point. Okay, now, what the next thing to talk about is two things. Well, he's going to do on and on about representation, which means turning something into an object, getting the picture, start, and then, once he's done that, the last thing we have, that's how to be, that's the object half. He has to talk about us as subjects. And what does that mean? Well, we're the ones who give the meaning to the picture. And so we're going to do objects and subjects next time. And we're going to go on and start reading the question concerning technology. Because I'm going to, I don't know how much time I'll have, but I'll start talking. Perfect. Great. So, um, start reading the, uh, question concerning technology as well. If you haven't finished the Age of the World picture. Then, yeah, more important it might be to go back and reread the, the Age of the World picture. Now that I talked about it, if it seems to you complete gibberish, reread it to see if it still means it still seems complete gibberish. Okay, let me see. It seems like there's also um, a lot of reference to what sounds like a personality to me. Really? And so I was just wondering, see, he starts to talk about um, the scholar disappearing. Yeah. And he starts talking about the um, research man, um, and it doesn't need a library anymore, it's moving around. It, it sounds like I really think, well, he's, that's interesting. I think he thinks, I don't think he thinks that uh, it's postmodern. I think he thinks that it's, uh, he's just a sort of describing, I better look at it, because what he's describing rightly, sort of what happens in, in research, in science, and in all of this university stuff, and the guy goes to conferences and all right, the time right, and flies right. around. Mm -hmm. Why is that important for him? I don't know. I'll think about yeah, it. Yeah, would you? Because it sounded like what you were describing as personal, but I don't yeah. know. I'm really going yeah. to your description. Right. I, think, I, I think it's not, but I can't yeah. tell you why. Yeah, so, you okay, what are the pages again? It's page 125. It's pretty 125. Much Post yeah, when I read that, I thought, well, he's just complaining about the way his colleagues are running all around. Yeah, but, no, but, but there must be something deeper in here, so I'll find out. Okay. 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 Yeah, hi. We're going to meet. Uh, yeah. Is it today? No. no. It's Friday. Friday at 5.45. Five, five five. Yeah. I'm, gonna, I'm probably going to send you my journal tonight or tomorrow night. Okay. But almost, almost definitely tonight. I'd like to take some space to organize. Okay. And let me... Um, Tell you, I might be a little bit late. I hope, think I can get there. But you shouldn't get in if, if you happen to be late. You shouldn't get into the building before six. So they lock it. Oh,